foam. So in this episode, we're actually gonna start cutting stuff out. We're gonna like actually make the first suit. We're gonna start with it. So in the last episode, if you haven't already seen it, we went ahead and created a character, right? From like ground up, how do you make a ref sheet for a brand new character? In this episode, we're gonna make the kind of scaffolding, the foundation, the skull of our fursuit, which is gonna be a foam base, right? You need to put the fur, the fur on something. And that's what we're gonna do here. Fursuit making 101. The fursuit is actually two main parts. So let me move the camera in closer. On the outside, you have the fur, right? This is what you actually see. But on the inside, if we just turn it over and look inside where there's this hole here, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's an entire foam base, right? It's like a skeleton created of fur. I know what you're thinking. I'm telling you to, to go ahead and sculpt an entire canine fursuit head from scratch and you've literally never made a fursuit before. That's impossible. How in the world you can do that? But I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna cheat. Clue Suits makes an excellent basic canine fursuit head pattern. You follow the pattern just like a Lego set, you cut it out, you assemble it with glue, and it gives you a really basic kind of shape to work off of for your own suit. We can add our own personal details to this and all the hard problems are already solved. We're gonna go ahead and start by cutting out each of these what, shapes and then cutting out our foam with a knife and Sharpie. I'm also gonna leave a link to where you can buy this from the make, from the original maker. It's really good, it's honestly a great pattern and she has an entire video where she spends like three straight hours assembling it for you on a live stream. Honestly, it's just great work. I know some of you are grinding away at RuneScape picking flax when instead you could be grinding away at a fursuit by cutting out pattern pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these pieces out with scissors and I'm gonna come back to you when we're ready to go ahead and cut out the foam with the knife. Okay, I have returned. I've gone ahead and cut out every single pattern piece we're gonna need for our head. But before we get started with that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to create the bucket for all of the other pieces to sit on top of. And the way that that's gonna work is we're gonna cut one big strip using this guy and then glue the ends together to create a big cylinder. So I know from measuring myself, my big head is 23 inches long. And this part here is gonna be just what, 11 and a half inches? So if we flip this, it's what, gonna be 23, which would be very close. Yeah, I think this will be fine. We, what we need to do now is cut out this piece as one big long one and then glue the ends together. So something I wanted to talk about while cutting this out is kind of the philosophy behind why doing the head first. I noticed when talking to a lot of people about fursuits, they always say they want to do the body, for, the body suit first or the, you know, the hands first, the feet first, or a easier part. But I think it's a sign of maturity to say that if I do the hardest part, you can most certainly do the rest of it, right? Like if you can finish the head, everything else is downhill. You're literally doing the hardest piece first and then everything past that point is gonna be easier. Now, that sounds daunting when you're doing something for the first time, but I think it's actually kind of a blessing in disguise. You have to learn everything anyways, and you might as well start with the most interesting part. Oops, I hit the camera there. And if you finish ahead, even if it's kind of bad, you're still gonna be so much more excited about it as opposed to if you just finish like, I don't know, a random pair of feet or something. It's a lot easier to get attached to building a head. I don't know, I just think it's a good way to approach these problems. If you, I mean, if you can finish the first you had, like literally everything else is at a child's play. Now, that's actually kind of a lie because it's still really hard. Um, a lot of people think bodysuits are easy because they just kind of look like rather regular clothes, but they're actually very difficult. So that's all uh, marked up. So what we need to do now is cut it out. There are a lot of different tools that you can choose. I see people recommend um, razors or scissors or just about anything. The box cutter is super cheap and it works pretty excellent. Also, steak knives. Uh, steak knives, if you don't have a box cutter, work surprisingly well. There are little like teeth on the blade just shot through this fur, or sorry, this foam, and it's super satisfying. Um, so this is the first cut of this project. I always find that this is the most intimidating one, right? Like. Once you make the first cut, it's all downhill from here. It's that first one is the hard one. I made this a little bit bigger than it probably needs to be, and I'm okay with that. Um, it's always easier to, oops, I'm sorry, got the camera there. It's always easier to take away, and it's a, it's a lot of times much harder to add, right? Like, let's say you needed to add an extra like half inch to the edge here. Ooh, that'd be a pain in the butt. 
you basically need to cut a strip, glue it. It's just, ah, just make it a little bit bigger. And then it's, it's always kind of fun to make it smaller anyways. So we also need to add the markings on this for where our nose and mouth are gonna go. Now it is important to, so we can separate this a little bit here. It is important to take your time on this kind of stuff, but you don't need to be super detailed. That was one of the biggest mistakes I made in the first fursuit, where you just spend so much time in the little details, but you figure it's gonna get covered in more fur, it's gonna get covered in more foam, it's gonna get covered in tape. You just kinda lose sight of those super minute details. In reality, you just gotta get the big pieces there, and once that's done, it's a lot easier just to kinda shape it out. It's gotta eat this chunk here. Um, if you haven't, uh, check out that clue suit pattern. It, making the fursuit is so intimidating, but just having a basic kind of canine pattern to follow just makes it so much more approachable. Uh, if not, you just end up doing a lot of work. I mean, it can, it's already hard enough. Like, don't make it harder for yourself. It's another sign of maturity just to accept to uh, use resources at your disposal. So I think we just got this one more chunk here. Oops, bump the camera again. And then this is going to get glued together like this. And then this is going to be the back of the head. And the front of the head is going to be here. And we're going to have a mouth and nose on it. In the last video, I said whatever the highest rated um, comment is, that is what we'll name the first suit. Samantha gave a lot of really great suggestions, but I think her suggestion of calling the first suit Ray is really good. And it's three characters, so it's easy to say and spell. Now, before we go ahead and glue this together, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It boosts engagement, makes these videos more popular on YouTube, I guess. Thank you so much. Now, let's go ahead and glue this together. Here goes nothing. Just add a little bit of bead of a glue. And I'll probably go back and add a little bit more. But I just want to get this nice and straight and together before strengthening it up. It is probably pretty important to get all of this nice and strong. Just so, I mean, this is where you're gonna have a ton of load on, right? Like, if you're if this part here fails, literally the whole entire head's gonna collapse. I'll wait for this to dry and then come back to you in a second. The best mini game when making a fursuit is tetrising all your pattern pieces on your old scrap. This is the last piece of foam from the previous suit, and look at this. Ah, it comes in so handy, it just lines up so perfectly with the next parts we need to cut. So, these are the top straps for the top of the fursuit head. We need two of these, one of these guys. It's the exact same process as before. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it all up and then cut it out and then come back to you. So just like a Lego set, the next step that we're gonna do is just sticking it all together. So here's our top strap, and here's where our mark is gonna go and where this is gonna be glued together. Now, if you've ever looked at a canine skull, it's not actually really round on top, it's actually fairly flat. So we wanna kind of replicate that slope, just like this here. We don't want it super flat, because that would look weird. We don't want it super round. It's just like this kind of Goldilocks zone right in the middle. I've also gone ahead and shaven this down, just so it's a more flush fit. So I'll go ahead and glue that together, let it all dry, and then come right back. For all the gamers out there, we have some first person glue action. Look at that bead. Got the top strap all glued on. Now, time to finish it up and add the pieces here. It's the exact same process as before. We're gonna go ahead and trim these lips so they fit nice and flush and then attach them just like this and this so that we have one big kind of X piece at the very top of our fursuit head. One cool thing about working with a pattern is that every time you finish a piece of the suit, you can throw away the actual pattern piece. It's like crossing things off your to-do list and it's really satisfying. It's like, it's one less thing you have to do and then when you go back, you can see exactly how many pieces you have left. So here is our finished bucket head. All the black part here, we're just gonna remove that. That's for the eyes and the muzzle. 
The top has dried, it's pretty darn secure. I feel very confident mounting stuff to this and it isn't gonna go anywhere. The next episode is gonna focus on adding a muzzle like this. And that's gonna be a whole episode into itself because we're gonna have to really kind of really get into sculpting the actual pieces themselves and kind of assembling it to one big chunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this episode done. As for a base into something to work off of in the future, I think this works perfectly and it feels very kind of well put together. In the next episode, we'll focus entirely on the muzzle and getting that sculpted and attached. I don't know if this video series is going too slow or too fast. I think it's more interesting if we go kind of piece by piece as opposed to just kind of one kind of fast forward and super cut of everything. At least this way you guys get to really appreciate just how much work really goes into this. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. If any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I really do read all of your guys' comments and I just appreciate it so much. Thank you. I look forward to you guys next time. Also, if you didn't think I was going to wear this, you're crazy. I had to try it on. You have to try it on, right? You have to try it on.